our digipreneur is on the Zoom line, coming to us live from Thailand. And of course, we continue in terms of our digital conversation. This time around, we're dealing with commerce and lessons that we could adopt and use from the Thai model and bring to the Trinidad and Tobago space and by extension, the Caribbean. Karen, great to see you, man. What's the time out there? It's afternoon, right? I would imagine. It's the evening time, so we're 11 hours ahead. So it's 6.15 p.m. Wow, my goodness. But we're <laughs> glad we're glad you're on with us and you promised to really keep that, keep the connect and, and we're happy we were able to do just that. Let's yeah, get into our yeah. conversation. Uh, lessons from Thailand for Trinidad and Tobago as we dive into that topic, very important one of commerce. How can we change the culture, Karen Rose? Yeah, no, listen, it's been two weeks since I landed in, in Thailand. And the biggest thing that has hit me is the culture around commerce. And what do I mean by the culture around commerce? There are people, so Bangkok alone is the number one most visited city in the world, right? It's been that way since it, it, they won the award last year in 2023. And if things continue, they might win it again for 2024, most visited city in the world. So because everybody is coming to these shores, what is being, what is taking place is that every single business carries as many payment options as possible because they're cognizant that even though the local people might like cash. They're cognizant that that's not the, the, the thought process for everybody around the world. And because everybody is coming with different payment apps, different types of credit cards, the infrastructure here really does facilitate as many payment options as possible. So regardless of where in the world you are coming from, you can land here in Thailand and be able to buy purchase, send money, and, and in a multitude of ways. And that stems from the, the culture here where typically in Trinidad, we don't like to take anything other than cash because any other option is going to require us to pay some sort of fee or to set something up. And we don't really want to go that extra distance. But the difference here is that the, the people from, from even the street food vendors taking digital payments, the whole thought process here is we don't mind paying a fee to get these services because now we're going to be able to sell in volume and we're going to be able to sell to anybody who comes into the country. And that's a starting mindset change that we need to have in Trinidad, especially as we're trying to push more in the tourism space to get people to come to our shores. Well, I mean, you know, you said something that it's, it's stuck. It, it, it like, you know, it, it's one that's trying to evaluate in my mind because clearly the tourism product is a vibrant one there in Thailand. So I would imagine yeah. they have been able to extend the capacity and allow different payment forums. But here in Trinidad and Tobago, as we know, the potential is there for ecotourism, sports tourism, I guess cultural tourism, the biggest push or influx we'll get is around carnival time. And most people really, especially the sole traders, those selling the water, the juice, the food, the arts and craft. I don't want to say it's a hustle per se, but I guess cash is king in Trinidad and people really, based on it's more or less a seasonal kind of push and not a yearly, every single weekend kind of scenario. How do we even get a conversation to, to, to Trinbagonian and especially the small business interests? to have different options to pay. When it, well, well, for some people, well, for some people, it's it, well, not all, but for some, it's a hustler. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And, and that is where that cultural shift has to happen, right? Because they've been putting in work for the cruise ship season, so we're trying to bring in people outside of the carnival season. But remember, too, we have things like, example, we have um, the, the color app from WePay, right? That anybody locally can download to their phone and they have the ability to accept credit card payments from anybody around the world. Tap to pay, the money's available in your, in your account instantaneously and you have access to the funds immediately because um, color gives you a color card. We also have things like NCash. Now NCash is only available for Trinidad citizens, but it's still another mechanism. So even though people th are, 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 are approaching this like a hustle, we have to keep in mind that not everybody wants cash 
And the fact that the TT dollar is no longer really accepted in most places in the world, the people that are coming here, it doesn't do them any justice to convert their money into TT dollars because they can't take that money outside of Trinidad. Nowhere else in the world is accepting it. So you're going to have more people not converting to TT dollars and utilizing their plastic. So even if you're selling water and hustling, you don't have to have a registered business to have a color app and you could accept credit card payments, right? But you need to have these facilities in place if you want to be able to get payments from anybody around the world at any point in time. And because there's no monthly fee, it doesn't, it does, it's not like you have to pay a monthly fee and then if no sales are coming in, then you know, you're out of pocket. There's no, there's no monthly fee. But again, that's the paradigm shift that has to happen that has happened here in Thailand where even the smallest vendors are taking QR code payments and everybody's able to receive payments from everybody in the world. You know, let's, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. There are many who, they want to embrace the technology. They want to go down that road because, again, who wants to have cash, especially with the current situation in Trinidad with crime and, and, and what we have to treat and deal with? There are many, their concern is, will my card, will my account get breached? Talk to those with that concern concerning the security, the cybersecurity surrounding that kind of framework, that financial framework as it relates to paying online or paying as you go with a card without cash. Um, deal with us, talk to us, and, and, and at least uh, give some kind of guarantee for those who have that kind of concern that, that they'll be okay. So that's a very good question. It's always going to be a popular question. Let me give you an example, right? I'm here in Thailand. One of the uh, digital platforms that I use is a digital bank called Wise, right? Within the first week of me being here, I have used um, Wise gives you a digital credit card and a physical card. My digital, my digital card was actually compromised within a week of me being here. I must have used it somewhere. It was compromised, right? So it was compromised. I woke up in the middle of the night to go use the washroom and I seen a transaction for like $5 done on my account. And I was like, wait a minute, I didn't make any transactions. I'm like, I'll deal with it in the morning. Two minutes later, I see another transaction for 65 US. And I said, oh my goodness, I need to deal with this now. Now, why I didn't panic was because with WISE, I was able to freeze my card mm -hmm. so that nothing could be done after that. I was able to dispute the transaction saying that I never made the purchase. And within seven hours, the money was refunded back into my account, all without speaking to anybody. My digital card was then deleted and I was able to re-download another one. I'm saying all that to say, your account getting breached, these things are just the normal things that are happening in this digital connected world. Where we have to put our, our, our stock into is what are the organizations going to do in the event that your, that your account gets compromised. So for me, I was able to get my account reimbursed within seven hours because I found it during the middle of the night. So when I woke up, the money was back into my account. They said, hey, you were, your, your card was utilized in some fraudulent activities. The old card has been deleted. Click this button to download a new digital card, and I got a new digital card. So where are where are companies and where the government of TNT, where they really have to build up is the support after these things happen, because it's going to happen, and it's going to happen regardless of what country, regardless of what bank, regardless of what tool you're using. These are just the things that are happening now, but it's what is going to be done. Are you going to be able to get your money back in a smooth process? Are you going to take care of your people in the event that these things happen? I am abroad. I am, in, I am on the other side of the world, so I'm not utilizing my home services like, like mm. I would want to. So these are the things that our, our institutions need to iron out and need to really show people and teach people so that if they run into these types of problems, they know what to do and also they know that they're gonna get served in a timely manner because it's your money and no one wants to have a compromised card or your compromised account when you are not in your home country. You know, I'm happy you were able to address that spot on. I was compromised once, uh, once with my credit card. Um, someone was doing shopping in, uh, I kid you not, Uzbekistan. 
Uh, that, that, that came up. Sounds about right. Yeah, that came up on my, on, my, on my statement. And well, you know, they dealt with me very professional. I was able to get it back, I had to fill out a form, sign up. So yes, um, as you rightfully said, the possibility is there, but there are checks and balances to ensure you get back your funds. Karen, uh, we're looking to wrap things up um, in the seconds yeah. that remain. Any closing remarks? We have about 15 seconds before we take the break. Yeah, my closing remark is one of the biggest push to having less cash circulating in the society of Thailand has been the government. The government created a platform called PromPay, and that's where they send all of the, the social wellness checks. Everything goes in the people's prompt pay account and it's the one payment system that's cheaper than everybody else so that they've incentivized the people to learn how to use it and actually use it out in the open these are the types of initiatives that we need to start seeing our government participate in we know the ministry of digital transformation just signed an agreement with um, an indian company to create a payment platform we hope this is the direction that it's going but again we need to have a major cultural shift with commerce if we really want to start getting um, money from outside of Trinidad and Tobago circulating within the TNT economy. Karen Rose, thank you so much for coming on. Have a great one. And we will touch base God spare next week for more inside our Digipreneur. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks for having me. That's Karen coming to us live from Thailand and sharing his experience. And, you know, that's the greatest experience when it comes to, to, to travel. You know, you, you're able to get knowledge, you're able to see, learn, and bring systems that clearly is working in other parts to the country, or at least bring recommendations and start the conversation. Speaking about conversation, conversations on cancer up next, and we're dealing with survivorship this morning. We welcome Amelia Ogaro McPhee to share her story of inspiration. Conversations on cancer up next. <laughs>